It's Ken Rakowski. Welcome back to The Voice of Disruption, where we meet people that are doing incredible things, disrupting, well, your lives in some ways. The guy that's sitting next to me, I have a feeling you're going to know him and his product. Give it a couple of years, and he's going to be one of those names you'll see on the cover of a magazine. Hopefully, magazines will still be around. His first name, it's actually, pr I pronounce it awesome, but it's not really pronounced like awesome, is it? It's awesome. Yeah, awesome, but we say awesome because yeah. it just works. <laughs> Saeed, who is joining us, and I think you and I connected back in 2010. Yes. And uh, you, were you a student in one of the schools I ran? I had just... I uh, came out of the being a student and I was like just in my young entrepreneurial ages. I think yeah. you're still in that young <laughs> entrepreneur time. You are. So uh, what inspires you as an entrepreneur? Why do you want to be an entrepreneur? Well, um, it's the growth of technology and looking at all the great things around us and also um, the people all around me and the people I meet inspire me. But it's tough, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it is, I but mean, it's I, a ch I love challenges. I'm not sure if you remember uh, the very first class, this is back in 2010, the first thing I try to do is talk you all out of being an entrepreneur. That's a good class because you uh, get rid of the weeds. You get rid of the weeds, right? Where are yeah. you originally from? Uh, originally, I'm from India. What part of India? Uh, I grew up in Chennai. Chennai, okay. Actually, some of the worst pollution in all India now, right? That's in New Delhi. <laughs> yeah, that's in New Delhi. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. And when did you move out of India? How old were you? In 2002 when I was uh, 18. 18 years old. Yeah. Did you want to leave India? Uh, yes. And you did? You wanted to come to the States? Uh, yes. What dro drove you here? Or what brought you here? What brought me here is um, actually a lot of the American TV shows brought me here. <laughs> TV shows? Yeah. Like I what mean, shows? Uh, when you're in India, you see a lot of TV shows uh, from the U.S. like Friends and uh, you won't believe Ali McBeal. Those no, kind of shows. those like, are the I mean, shows. We used to watch those and okay. then we thought, hey, this place looks nice. We should come here. And did you meet any? Did you meet Chandler? Did you meet Ali? Did you get to meet any of them? Well, I met many celebrities, but I haven't met the <laughs> people from Friends yet. I don't think you want to, <laughs> but you're here in the States. Is yeah. it what you expected? Is it better, worse? What do you think? Well, I think um, every place has its uh, good things and bad things, and I focus on the best of every place. So I, I, I like where I am right now in the Los Angeles. Is that a characteristic of most entrepreneurs where they focus on the positive? The good ones, yes. The good ones? Yes. The ones that don't focus on the positive, they what? Well, uh, they usually are depressed and they uh, don't come out that much. So I think that if you want to really make it, and I think you agree with me, to become incredibly successful, you have to do something that's incredible. That's right. And you saw a market opportunity with the, actually the product you're holding or you have in front of us. What was that market opportunity? Well, the market opportunity is I saw that a lot of people around me, they wanted to um, enjoy content and entertainment. And I saw that as soon as mobile phones came into the market, too many people did not want to watch TV. They did not, and, right. But they wanted to watch content. So. Um, what do we do uh, is to uh, make the cell phones a place where they can watch their TV. A shared so, experience. Exactly. So what you did is? I, I, may, I put a projector in the device so that now multiple people can watch their television together through their mobile device. So what I'm holding right now, it looks like it's an Android device. That's right. It's an Android device. It would resonate or look similar to a Samsung device. If I would, I'm looking at it, okay? I may not know exactly. But what is unique is this hump on the back, which is the projection unit. Now, I believe these are called Pico projectors, is that correct? Uh, that's one of the terms. Okay, what would you call it? Uh, we call it a nano projector. A nano projector. Yes. <laughs> Pico <laughs> nano, okay, got it. But what it is, is it's a small projector that's able to project onto a large environment. Yes, just like a, a bigger projector is projected on a screen, we can project anywhere, like in the wall, in a screen, so in a shirt. So the ones that I've seen generally project for a few minutes and it overheats the phone. Do you have a similar dilemma with yours? We can project for three hours. Three hours. And we have the technology to reduce heat without using fans. Without? Wait, that's your technology? That's right. Okay, so you're not just a phone projection company. You have multiple different types of patents and tools that you've created. We have several intellectual properties in, uh, and also trade secrets too. And, tell me one. Uh, tell me one. So uh, one Give of me them one is trade secret. We, <laughs> we use nanotechnology architecture to build our devices, so our devices are more advanced, and we are able to do things that others can't. So awesome! This phone is this available today? Uh, it is available for testing and certifications and also for uh, distributors and carriers. I don't know what you just said. Can I buy one of these? Uh, yes, you can, but uh, you won't receive it until March. Okay. 
So the phone will be available in March, and it's your own brand. You did That's something right. unique. You didn't go off and uh, actually work with somebody else. I never, never fell for that. <laughs> well, do you think that's a disadvantage? That's right, because the current brands, they're too saturated. People want something new. If you look at everywhere around you, people look for something new and catchy, and they don't want the same old. And by but working with a Samsung or an HTC, you would have their inventory flow, their channels, their development. Wouldn't it be a lot easier? Well, I'll make way lesser money than, uh, uh, than them. Because you would have... We can make bigger margins selling oh. it ourselves. And but our, it's harder! And not really. In the current world, okay. it's not. Totally surprises me. Why is it not harder? Because, uh, because the communication industry and the internet, the world is so much smaller. Any Tom, Dick, and Harry can come up with a product and market it themselves. The tools are all over on the internet. Okay, people want to find out more. Where do they go? Well, they can actually go to our website, acumen.com. And you spell that. It's A-K-Y-U-M-E-N.com to right. find out more. How much would a device like this cost? Uh, Seven ninety nine. So it's eight hundred dollars. Yes, eight hundred. Eight hundred bucks. <laughs> and this eight hundred dollars is going to be the phone plus the projection system. Uh, yes, it a uh, phone has a built-in projector, and it also comes with an accessory set. So, I like this. So look yeah. at this. Now let's kind of really talk about what's going on here. It's not about the phone. I know this is one of your products. You have a whole bunch of ideas. That's right. And you're testing out ways to sell, uh, develop, and actually conquer different markets. So are you trying to create a brand? Uh, that's right, we are. We, uh, we, that's why we also made a tablet with a built-in projector with a Windows 10 OS, and we are uh, working with companies such as Microsoft to market it globally. Okay, it's not just that. You and I were just kind of goofing around the other day, and we were talking about a friend of mine who makes uh, apparel. And that's he goes, right. wouldn't it be cool to have a bulletproof T-shirt? And you go, I can make that for you. That can be done with the use of nanotechnology. Because in developing the phone, you've learned other ways to utilize nanotechnology for That's things right. that we wouldn't even think about. That's right. And the thing is this, uh, it's not that we won't think about, it's like very few have thought about it and done it. Mm -hmm. And we are in a close circle of people who know each other. And so we share certain ideas, technologies, and make things that uh, uh, normal people haven't heard of. Make a bulletproof T-shirt. I want one. I, I don't think I'll ever need it, but it's kind of cool to have on. I think looking at the current situation, people might need <laughs> might those need in the one future. of those, right? Awesome. So, as you are here in the states now, going on what just 15 years, uh, 14 years, more than 15. Yeah, I would say. What's your feel about uh, being a Indian in America? Do you get um, the same type of treatment as everybody else, or do you always feel you have to work extra hard? Well, uh, I get the same type of treatment just like anybody else. It's the people who think they need to work extra hard are people who actually don't think outside the box. They're in their closed group. They, don't, uh, they are very afraid of rejection. Okay. Rejection will always happen to everybody, no matter who. So you, you got to fight rejection and move forward. Have you gotten a lot of rejection when it comes to your, your devices, even yourself? Absolutely. How do you I mean, get around that? Well, I just, uh, if somebody rejects, I kindly say thank you for your information and I move to the next step. And you just turn it off or yes. do you absorb it? No, I just turn it off. And, but I do listen to them. I ask them the question back, what made you reject? Usually, if uh, usually people answer that question. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't. The people who don't are the ones who you, yeah, you think that they're literally uh, are not good enough to do business with. It, yeah. It's a way for you to weed out the yeah. ones The good you don't people, if they reject you, they'll tell you why they reject you. Hey, I, I don't mind, I don't want to call it criticism, but I like to get some support from people, right. right? The honesty. Now, I'm wondering, you heard this term called brain drain? Uh, I've heard of it. Yeah, your country's <laughs> gone through it. Uh, I would say um, every country goes through it, including the United States. Over here, actually, there's a lot of brain drain, too. Look at Eduardo Saverin. He went to Singapore. That's right. The one <laughs> and that's not just brain Facebook. drain, that's money drain too. It's billions and billions of dollars, <laughs> right? Yes. I know Eduardo quite well, and he left, he's a yep. Brazilian, he helped found <laughs> that's Facebook. Right. But you look at brain drain in your country, it sounds like it's actually switching, where it used to be people left India, now they're actually coming back, aren't they? Uh, well, um, they are, but the thing is, I think, if you look at statistics, uh, I would say it normalizes. It does. Yeah, because people always want to go back. Uh, after a while, they miss their place, they miss their country, they miss the people and the food, and they go back. Yeah. See, I think, Awesome, you, where you have a superpower is everyone outsources to India, but they don't understand the Indian culture. They don't know how to speak the proper language. That's right. You do. Yes. So do you outsource to India? Uh, certain things I do. 
Um, and uh, I call it offshoring. Offshoring. And, uh, and uh, I actually also offshore to other countries. There are 16 countries I offshore to. 16? Yes. And they're all different, their work ethics and the and environment. It's, yes, and the best part is it was a great learning experience. And I personally went there, spent time in those countries, got to know people from in and out, and then's when I established businesses in multiple places. Something I've always admired about you, you don't have a, a, at least an ego that I see. No, you're, you're always helpful, you want to be there to assist, you're all about the common good. But internally, you got to have that one ego thing that you want to see for yourself. Would you like to see yourself on a cover of a magazine or a 60 Minutes episode? What, to you, is like success? For me, success is if I make people around me understand that you don't have to depend on venture capitalists and the big corporations to make yourself successful. You can do it yourself. I want people to know from me that it can be done by yourself. So, Time Magazine? That'll be a great place to be. <laughs> My phone made it a long time ago. Your but phone did, now it's gonna be you, <laughs> yeah. right? So awesome, again, people wanna find out more, where do they go? Uh, well, they go to acumen.com, right. or they can even go to the Facebook page, um, facebook.com slash acumencorp. It's all right there. Yeah. Awesome, I appreciate you hanging out with us. Yeah, sure. All right, got a lot more to talk about. When we come back, we're gonna talk about this conceptual idea of how to hack, not a bad term, yourself to the top. We'll find out a lot more. I'm Ken Rakowski. This is the Voice of Disruption. We'll be right back. Thank you.